Hey all, Scott here. Just wanted to show you this uh, Kodak Carousel Dissolve Control. It's uh, The date on inside of it is 1968, as you can see uh, over there somewhere. So it's kind of neat. You have um, this that you plug into the wall, which it is, and then you have a couple of slide projectors like this one right here. This is a uh, just a Kodak um, as an Ectographic 3. Um, this one's actually from the uh, the Strassenberg Planetarium, um, and some of the slides are too, which you'll see in a moment. Um, so what you do is you plug your your uh, your projectors into this little device. There's two outlets on here. They are switched with the switch that's here. Um, you have a setting here for um, time. What it basically does is it will advance one slide projector and fade it up so you can see the picture. And then while it's doing that, it advances the second slide projector. I only have one, unfortunately. Um, and then, oh, my hands are really dirty from working on this. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, it advances one while the other one is, is showing. And then it fades out this one, shows the other one, then it advances the, the first one, goes back and forth. So you get a nice little slideshow of it dissolving slides back and forth. Really easy to do nowadays, but uh, in 1968, this is the technology you had. So what you do is you have these two cords coming out of the back of it. You plug one into projector A. You can see it plugged in right there. And one plugged into projector B. Here's the other plug. Um, the little sockets here have 110 volts. And then these other ones are all 28 volt AC logic. So, so yeah, that's a thing. And uh, basically the, uh, the pinout is um, for these five connectors here in the very least, it's uh, two of them go uh, forward and backwards and two of them adjust the focus. It's basically the connector that you use on the back here is usually used with a little hand remote. Um, so the projector itself has, as you can see here, forward, reverse, uh, fan, low and high, and then over here, your focus control and your autofocus. And then I have a slide tray loaded in here. Um, if you press the thing down the side, then well, you get the idea. Anyway, so over here, we have the really interesting part of it, which is the Dissolve Control. This is Model 1. Uh, they made these through the 90s, I believe. I imagine with a slightly different technology. But So I'll turn it on. Already you'll notice that it is almost entirely electromechanical. So what you got in here is a fan that's constantly spinning this motor and it's spinning this belt right here. I'm not going to touch any of this because some of the, the parts of this are actually live power. They, the, uh, that orange wire there goes between 2 volts and 28 volts, so, so that's fun. Um, yeah, so here you go. It's a little dirty. I was going to be cleaning it up, but I decided not to because it works. So I'll probably throw some, some cleaner grease in there at some point. So basically what it is, is this little slide switch here, which I can adjust if you notice the orange wire moving there. This is, has an arm here that touches, I don't know if you can really see it, but the back side of this cog right there, that wheel right there, you can see it turning. And it's kind of hard to make out, but there are little contacts on that. So depending on where that slide switch is set, it's either touching an inner part of the wheel, which has um, the contacts more often, I think, uh, less often, um, or on the outside where the contacts are more often. And that lines up with the contacts on the outside edge being about every six seconds and the contacts on the inside edge roughly being every 14 seconds. Okay, so there's the timing mechanism. Can I adjust the brightness on there so you can see? Yeah, I can kind of see it in there. So that triggers the gear, which you can see here turning every once in a while. It's set for six seconds right now. In fact, if you look carefully, you may even see a little spark, which is kind of neat. Spark. Maybe we'll see it this time. A little bit. Okay, so that turns that wheel, which then moves this arm back and forth like a, uh, a drive part on a train wheel except it doesn't go all the way around it just goes back and forth 
And then that, in turn, moves this thing back and forth. It's pretty crazy. And that is basically a light dimmer. Well, a two-directional two light dimmer, where it can fade two things at once, one in each direction. Oops, that was my finger over the front. So here is the electronics, which is basically just two light dimmers. I'm gonna turn on the projector now. So in order to use this, you have to set the projector on fan because, because it's using the, um, the, uh, the, the remote to tell it when to turn the light on. So you notice here, see if I can get it all in shot. Well, there it goes, it advances it, and you can see something there. It actually says, Big Zipper. So these slides are actually from the Rochester Museum and Science Center, from the Strassenburg Planetarium. See, there you go. Strassenburg Planetarium Star Theater. So that's pretty fun. Um, yeah, so you can actually just watch it here. There you go. So at some point I need to uh, properly digitize these because some of these slides are just really fascinating. They're from about four or five different presentations. I'm not really sure what all of them are, but um, yeah, some of them are a little interesting. I don't know what, what that was all about. So the reason why it stays dark for so long right here is because normally um, during those times when it's that dark, the other slide projector would be showing its thing. So even though it's set for six seconds, you basically get six seconds of this and then six seconds of the other, um, of the other projector. Uh, if I turn, just turn it on, I'll just set the switch so that it's always on. Yeah, there's some, I'll just manually skip through here. I kind of sorted these. Um, this is all about um, Cassini. So this was apparently a star show that was uh, shown. I don't know if you can hear me right now. I hope you can. Um, from a star show that was shown before that, there's some, there's Hubble, and then there's uh, some interesting photos that I believe were taken by Hubble. I think that's an X-ray telescope, because I think that's how X-ray uh, lenses are arranged in concentric circles like that. That's definitely a Hubble image. There's Comet Wild too. So yeah, there's some some neat stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought some of you might find. Focus. Thank you. Uh, I thought some of you might find this kind of electromechanical technology interesting. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Oh, and uh, this, this has got like the best feeling switch in the world. I love the feel of that switch. Yeah, here's the bottom of it in case you were curious. Let's see if I can brighten that up in there. You can kind of see it in there. So yeah, normally this is all inside that box that I showed you starting out with. Oh, there is that spark. There it is. Anywho, so 1968. There you go. Actually, I'm, I think this is almost my longest video ever. So let's just let it go so that I hit the 10 minute mark just for the fun of it. And the, uh, the belt is still nice and tight. It's pretty cool. Anyway, 
have a good one, everyone. Thanks for watching. And uh, be well.